Hello everyone, this week's Vegetables Man City 2.0 here and um, welcome to your reading our stories, part whatever, the tales, part whatever. Last time we started Tiger Lee part 2, uh, we got uh, we got some backstories reveals. We were introduced to Nar. There is a cat under my desk trying to get all the love and attention. Like, this is definitely going to mess with Cat. Cat. Now watch where I get the camera back in the correct space, which is funny because I'm... There's something I want to watch in like 15 minutes, so I'm cutting everything a little bit short, you know? But it's fine. Okay, that. That's, that's correct enough. See, you can see the cat in the back. Cat. Okay, let's just read. My hair is done. It's fine. Chapter 5, Alarming News. I don't know what happens in this chapter. They arrived back at the little shack, which really was too small for them. They all got and went straight to sleep. They were woken by the sun rising as the shack lacked any form of curtains. It was also dreadfully cold, but there was a little bit that looked like they could start a fire there, so they did. <laughs> okay. Tiger Lily, Azalea and the Tigers and Daisy Chain. That's like the worst way to make a list, but okay. Went to the river to try to catch some fish so that they could cook over the fire for breakfast. Tiger Lily had been taught how to catch fish when she was young by the head tiger. I mean, all Nara and Chi Chi stayed inside to make sure the fire didn't get out of hand. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your dad? asked Nara. Chi Chi just gazed into the fire. He died before I was born, responded Chi Chi. I heard what you said to Azalea. Is that true or did you make him more kid friendly? asked Nara. Chi Chi's like two years older than Azalea. I uh, made it more kid friendly, but why do you care? asked Chi Chi. Please tell me what actually happened to you, requested Nara. Fine, I don't like talking about it, but fine, snatched Chi Chi, which is different from his normal happy demeanour. I wasn't abandoned. My mother hated to my guts, but kept me around. So his backstory last time was not completely true. For child support money. She would play games with me, tease me, restrict my food if I failed something. It was absolute torture. I wish you had enough of it and run away and sort of survive, and here I am now, as with Chi Chi. Did you ever know your dad's name? asked Noah. Yes, his name was Jackie Bunting, responded Chi Chi. I thought so. Your name isn't actually Chi Chi, is it? responded Noah. What do you mean? asked Chi Chi. Come on, I thought you were smarter than that. Jackie Bunting, what's my name? Noah Bunting. They're secretly related! This is like the only possible time you have to do in those tales. Make everyone have long lost family members. And then now. Uh, oh wait, then tell me my real name, Rosemary Chi Chi. Your real name is Charlie Bunting, isn't it, Rosemary now? Yeah, but I prefer Chi Chi, Rosemary Chi Chi. So do I. It's a million times better, Rosemary now. So what were you to my dad anyway? asked Chi Chi. Do his little brother. He left a long time, a long time before I did. He was twelve years older than me. Do you know why he died? Asked Noah. Wait, you're my uncle. How did you know I was his son? And do you know where my dad died? Asked Gigi. I knew you were his son because you are a striking image of him. And your dad died because the police started to believe him about the abuse, and your grandma and granddad killed him. Because they didn't want their dirty little secret guest to get out, it's one did know. Where do they live? I must avenge my father, one Chi Chi. Chi Chi, you didn't even know your father. A few tears forming in his eyes, Noah hugged him. No, I understand how you feel. I wanted to hurt them as well, but the justice system didn't completely fail that time. I found them guilty. They are currently spending life in prison. Okay, so Chi Chi lied about his father being dead and about his original backstory. His true backstory is that his father didn't die before he was born. His father and his mum was exploiting 
she's not the full money and you know i could have made it a little bit clearer and um and then chi chi ran away and yeah okay that makes some semblance of sense i know mum was horrid but you are only 10 and i would love to be the parental figure in your life oh wait i've got to read how would you feel about me raising you i know your mum was horrid but you are only 10 and i would love to be the parental figure in your life question now oh i would like that responded chi chi they hugged and talked about things meanwhile at the river which was sparkling diamond blue in color the sound from the river was quite relaxing to them and made them feel calm compared to most other things that was the nature that was the beauty of nature that's a cool description there were several trees towering over them with grace and swaying gently in the gentle breeze. The banks of the river was filled with emerald green grass. Daisy Chain had caught a few fish using her daisy chains. <laughs> she just picked them up with the daisy chains. And the tiger had caught a few. And the tigers had caught a few. Miley gulped down the ones she caught whilst Prince placed them in the into the bucket. Tiger Lily had also caught a few, but as Azalea was struggling. Tiger Lily tried to help her, but it seemed like to be a lost cause. But it was something they could work on. They went back to a tiny shack with the fish where Chi Chi and Nora told them what they had found out. They prepared the fish and enjoyed it very much. You see, I don't know why I decided to make this a story point, but you know what, it's fine. After they had the fish, I they decided to stroke the tigers. I only to, actually, I know exactly why I decided to make this a story point. I only found out that they both had, had a had lump on them. Tiger Lily explained this and rushed with the tigers to find the vet. When they arrived at a vet place in Tauki City, it was a, it was clinically clean and a spark, sparkling pearly white wall. What? Wait, aren't you Tiger Lily? shouted the vet. Please just tell me about these lumps, cried Tiger Lily in absolute panic. Fine, muttered the vet as she took samples of each of them and tested them. I'm sorry, I just spoke to heal myself. Um, I'm sorry to say, but they are cancerous. It was like the world had stopped spinning. This couldn't be real. What would she do about her tigers? They had been with her through all the tough times. For all the time she'd felt hopeless with raising Daisy Chain. They had been there to give her a comforting cud cuddles. They were part of Tiger Lily's world. They meant the world to her. This couldn't be true. She began to cry. She ran out of the vets with her tigers. She didn't know what to do. She got back to the shack and said the bad news. It was like the mood had suddenly been dampened. Everyone was quiet. They all loved the tigers. They were such happy things that filled them all with joy. Lady Chain didn't quite know how to react. She just hugged them, almost breaking down. Chi Chi put an arm around her and hugged her, and offered her a tissue which she accepted. Tiger Lee also began to cry, and Noah hugged her. She reciprocated the hug as it felt nice and comforting. <sighs> Chapter 6, a bit of which she helped. The news had completely shattered Tiger Lily's world. What are we going to do? asked Tiger Lily. Daisy Chain was looking at the phone. She had kept in contact with Ellie. It's all connecting! The Girl of Eagles. She had texted her about the news. I mean, I don't know why I think it's all connecting, as if Tiger Lily, Daisy Chain, etc. weren't all in the villains part 2. She had texted her news. The sunny day she had looked up from her phone, hopefully. So I was just texting Ali, and she says that maybe we can make them into soul pets or for, for people with animal powers. That just happens as soon as they are born. Apparently there is a witch. That's convenient. We can make them into soul pets so they won't die until you die, said Daisy Chain, hopefully. Cool Ali responded. Oh my god, I thought she called Ali. You know, one thing I do remember is Ali and Daisy Chain's friendship was really sweet. And that kind of doesn't happen anymore because they're still in the same world, just they don't have the soul pets to meet. And in the current story, Ali isn't a villain. Hey, how have you all been other than the news you received? The news you recently received? asked Ellie quite cheerfully. You sound cheerful, smiled Daisy Chain. How's things going? Not to brag or jinx our luck, we haven't been caught for a while and we are committing small crimes at the moment. Ellie, who are you talking to? shouted Otak. They heard her voice in the distance of the phone. Daisy Chain responded to Ali before continuing to talk to them. So you were saying about this witch that you think could help us? Mentioned Tiger Lily, hopefully. 
Yes. Oh yeah, she lives in Tokyo City. So pretty close to you lot. Number 22, flat 22 on 22 Street, responded Ellie. I know 22 is like my favourite number, but <laughs> do I really have to? Okay. That's a lot of 22s, Matsu Chichi. Yeah, some people really like that one. <laughs> okay, I was just tagging myself, responded Ellie. Okay, we're going to go there now. I'll text you later. Okay, responded Daisy Chain. Okay, bye, shouted Ellie. Bye, they were shouted in unison, and Daisy Chain hung up. They decided that, they decided that Chi Chi, Noah, and Azalea would stay at the shack while Tiger Lee, Daisy Chain, and the Tigers would go to the witch. Tiger Lee put on some makeup and a wig. This time she was going to be careful, especially since Tiger City was busy. How do you hide the fact you have two tigers with you? I, don't th I think that in itself would get you a couple of police calls. And off they set. They kept it back alleys. Okay, fair enough. I did actually explain it. I'm sorry, past me. You're not as stupid as I thought you were. Keep the tigers out of the sight of public eye. They eventually made it and knocked on the door. The door slowly creaked open. Come in, said the witch. She was rather tall and lean, with abnormal purple hair. <laughs> but first, um, Lily pad with the like broccoli green hair and being called broccoli and now a witch with a throat of a normal green the normal purple hair it's not like she's my only character with purple hair shadow has always had purple hair she had a pointed witch hat on and a crooked nose like kind of like a stereotypical witch what do you want asked the witch i want to make these two tigers into my soul pets for someone tiger that isn't going to be cheap so wanted the witch what do you want asked tiger Lee. I want you to get me something from the police office. You see, it is a special thing they have been hiding there. It is a powerful jewel. Is it the jewel of algebra? I don't remember if the jewel of algebra is actually powerful. Said the witch. Said the witch. Okay, where exactly is it? Asked Tiger Lily. In the lady's office. That is the police office that she owns. Responded the witch. Of course it's the lady's office. You know what? I'll do it. I will do it. Responded Tiger Lily. Good, responded the witch. Tiger Lee did chase us off. Why does it always have to do with Lily? Matter Tiger Lee. These are related. I guess it is fate, responded Daisy Chain. I can't view the word fate normally anymore because in my current story I have a character called Fate. And I guess I also do have a character called Fate in the original, but I don't know if we ever got to introduce the original Fate. And I don't like counting it as the original Fate because reasons. They waited until nightfall. Daisy Chain is brought and Daisy Chain is out of the ground to lift them up. She'd recently been getting a lot better at using her powers and not fainting. How much time has passed, bro? How is she suddenly better? They got to the window of, t of Lily's office, which was very conveniently open. <laughs> of course it was. They crept in. They searched her desk. Tiger Lily found it. And just as they were about to leave, Tiger Lily, what the hell are you doing in my office? You finally... You here to finally give yourself up? Asked Lily as she calmly drank some coffee. No, I was wondering, Tiger Lily. How did you know it was me? I'm wearing makeup. Didn't think so. So, wonder Lily. Um, so why are you in my office? And I knew it was you because you, we are related. Uh, okay. She got. She asked. I should get going here, Tiger Lily. I'm afraid that's not an option. And I'm guessing Daisy Chain still doesn't want to be adopted by someone on the side of good. Responded Lily. No, nope, responded Daisy Chain coldly. Okay, then muttered Lily as she put her coffee down and drew out her sword. And Tiger Lee backed towards the window. Go, Tiger Lee muttered Daisy Chain. And Daisy Chain jumped out the window. Then she sent Daisy Chain. Daisy Chains through the window. You know, it doesn't help when she's called Daisy Chain and her powers are Daisy Chain. I don't, I don't put the S at the end of Daisy Chains. She sent Daisy Chains through the window that grabbed Tiger Lily and they ran back to the witch's place, much to Lily's dismay. The witch performed the spell and Prince and Wiley were saved. They returned back to the hut with the good news and everyone was happy. That's good. Chapter 7, A Battle. They decided to go for a walk through the forest with tigers to, with the tigers to celebrate the good news. They walked through the forest and drinking beautiful fresh air and it was rather early in the morning. It was rather chilly. It was like ice daggers. That was a good description from Boss Me. Congratulations. But there was something oddly refreshing about it. The fresh morning air. What does that mean? If I were a path in the woods, they heard something 
cracking. They heard some cracking of some sticks, probably just some animals. I kept walking rather relaxed. Crack! They heard it again and again. Now they were starting to get worried, Tigerly got out one of her daggers and then she saw them. Lily jumped out of the bushes, her sword drawn. Lily Cab was just behind her with her bow and arrow out. There was a 12 year old girl who Tigerly recognised from the papers as being Blossom! I didn't think Blossom appeared again! Oh, that's a pleasant surprise, actually. Honestly, I thought Blossom's last appearance was her getting put in a coma by Mela. That's that Mela girl had... She, I guess she had woke up from her coma that that Mela girl had put her in. Duh. There was a boy there who they didn't know. He looked to be about 15 with grey hair and grey eyes. I, I think I know who that is. I think. I think that's original days. Days is in my current story. Because days isn't just a character who came up with on the spot, believe it or not. There was another boy who looked to be about 13. He, he looked, he seemed to have a stupid grin on his face. Who is this though? I don't have a clue who this is. He had light brown hair and dark brown eyes. You know, it's nice when I can get surprised and completely forget characters. I thought... I thought we would come see you after you to drop by yesterday, remarked Lily. How did you find us? asked Tigerly. You were walking on a public trail where lots of people walk without any disguise on. Come on, sis. I thought you were smarter than that, responded Lily. Could you at least tell me who you have with you? asked Tigerly. Well, obviously, you know Lily Pad, responded T Lily before being interrupted by Tigerly. You mean Broccoli Head, right? injected Lily. Shut it, criminal, responded Lily Pad. Oh, are we getting defended? That's so mean. I'm very. Are we getting defended? Offended, that's so mean. I'm very hurt. Tigerly, be nice to your sister, Jesus Christ. What did she do to you other than have green hair? Poor Tigerly, sarcastically. Back to the matter of hand. The kid with grey hair is Graham's son. Grace. <laughs> Graham's son, Grace. Graham is the one. Oh, it literally just says it here. You know, I don't need to explain it. You know, the one that Shadow killed? So Shadow killed Graham. Graham's the one that's last text was Shadow is the one that has the power Shadow has the potential to be to be the Earth person and then died. I think you've heard about Blossom before, and this grinning over here is the twin of happiness. His name is Happino. Oh, I wasn't aware I actually haven't got far enough to introduce Happino. Runic happiness in my current story is very different, so I wouldn't say that the current runic happiness is the same character. But yeah. But again, runic happiness has not been introduced in time travel halls yet, so... Yeah. So are you going to give yourself up today? You ask me that question every time, what do I say, asked Tiger Lily. You say no. So the answer is no, there was one Lily. Yep, we have a winner. I'm not giving myself up, I'm just like Lily. Okay then, we are done talking for today, I just wanted to I just wanted Lily. You know, this is a little bit confusing to read. She charged Tigerly with her sword, Tigerly quickly dodged and drew out her rainbow combat knife. I forgot she had a rainbow combat knife. I wonder what's that that's foreshadowing. I don't think that's actual foreshadowing. I'm just being silly. Tigerly had never been trained with a sword, which made people like Lily really hard to deal with. Tigerly tried to get in close, but it was proving to be a challenge. Considering how ever effective the combat knife was, it sucked in situations like this. Tigerly got out one of her daggers. Sure, they weren't as long as a sword, but they were a lot better against a sword. Also, Lily Pad was shooting arrows at her. Then Noah joined her. He didn't have weapons, so Tigerly gave him one of one of her daggers. Meanwhile, the Daggers of Chain versus Blossom is actually a really interesting fight. If they fight. So they both have flower powers. Flower power. In the current story, I don't think they're going to fight, because... Blossom is very different in the current story. And Daisy Chain hasn't been introduced, because there's going to be a spin-off. Well, I guess Tiger Lee is going to be a spin-off, because it's going to be set in the same world still, just... Yeah. 
Daisy Chain and Shishi and Zadia were up against the other kids. However, they had a slight disadvantage considering the fact that none of them were older than 10. <laughs> That's a disadvantage. And only two of them had powers. Whereas the one that didn't... Uh, whereas the ones that they were up against were all older than them and all had powers. They could tell Happy, you know, had used his power first. And they suddenly all felt very happy, like, oh, I think in the original they don't... Some of them don't have the ability to take away happiness and stuff, because all the runic emotions can either give the emotion or take it away. They should burst out laughing. That was all of them except Daisy Chain. He had decided to take away her happiness. Oh, he can. I, I, I should just read and stop commenting. Daisy Chain never felt this sad. Suddenly, thoughts flashed into her mind. Thoughts about all that had happened. How truly messed up her birth was. Why was she here? She had only gotten lucky. Her dad would have surely killed her as well. Why does she have to survive? Survive this girl. Oh, Daisy Chain. She collapsed to her knees, bawling her eyes out. Yeah, the running emotions can be a little bit messed up sometimes. They just make people feel such intense emotions, which caught the other two off guard. They'd never seen Daisy Chain as emotional. It was hard to make her do that. What did you do to her? Us, GT trying to sound angry, but because of Happy Nose Power, he just sounded happy. Don't you dare hurt my niece, shouted Azalea. She sounded happy as she rushed at them with, her da with a dagger. Grayson used his power of earth to get Hapina out of the way before using it to send the sailor crashing backwards the floor. She hit her head on a tree and burst out laughing in pain. This is a little bit insane. I didn't realise the runic happiness was... How was that? <laughs> Don't let your guard down like that, commented Gray Commander Grayson. Just because you are a commander of the squad doesn't mean you can tell me what to do, responded Hapina happily. Both of you shut up. We have more important matters at hand. Don't let drop your guard. <laughs> or you could end up losing a leg like Snowy did. Or end up in a coma like me as one Blossom. And where is your boyfriend now? He defected to the other side, didn't he, Blossom? Because he failed to defeat them. Because he's a weak thing, responded Grayson. Damn. <laughs> yeah, well, by, but by that logic, isn't your dad weaker considering he died? Oh. Blossom. That's. Oh. Uh, Probably Blossom is the regretting the fact she had said that. Why, well, if you don't shut up, you're going to be back in a coat. Sunday Grayson, sharply. Damn. Original days and original Blossom. I didn't, re I didn't remember them having this beef. Happy and I was watching what was happening. He had kind of released his power. Daisy Chain got up. She was angry. No one made her get upset like that. What was this? Some kind of game to him? She briefly acknowledged what was happening with Blossom and Grayson. Not even the heroes got or heroes got along. Get along. Did they forget who they were fighting? Guys, set your drama for later. More important, Matt said. Happy, you know, he was cut off by Daisy Chain, slapping him in the face before using her Daisy Chain to hang him upside down. And using him as a punching bag to wounds knocked it off. Honestly, fair. It was so quick that it took time for the other heroes to notice. But when they did, they realised they'd let their guard down. Blossom wasted no time summoning Blossom Petals. It didn't seem to seem like much at first. But like with Daisy Chain, her powers seemed weaker than they actually was. The petals were actually razor sharp. They sh she shot several at Daisy Chain. He began to bat them away with her Daisy Chain. The fights of the flower. The fight of the flowers. Grayson, meanwhile, used his earth to protect himself and Blossom from any oncoming attack. Despite the fact that they argued, she could see why they made a good team. Blossom was more of an attacker, whilst Grayson's style was more defensive. Both of their powers could be used for attack and defense. But they each had their own style, and Hapino was there to keep the mood positive, as they had both been through quite a lot of things. We don't need a recap! We've literally established this, like, several times this chapter. Also, I put in a claim and broke up only to find out that her boyfriend had been captured by villains. Not any villains, but the ones who were the most ruthless. He had been tortured and become their obedient servant and joined their side. Meanwhile, Grayson had been raised for 15 years by a loving father. He was killed by a member of the Elements of Dark. 
shadow of the girl, nightmares and fear. It was clear they had been paired together because they both had a grudge against the elements of dark. Still true. They still do both have a grudge against Layla and Layla's group. Deity Jane's mind had gotten a bit sidetracked, sidetracked so much that she didn't notice Grayson had launched an attack at Azalea, who Daisy Chain viewed as the weakest link. Daisy Chain, please! Be nice to your aunt. He had hit her with it, sending her flying towards the tree. Ruby Red Blood started to appear on her body. No one does that to my family, shouted Daisy Chain, as she shot Daisy Chains at them. But they didn't really make it there because Blossom's razor shot Blossom Pedals were stopping it. Mummy, she isn't your blood family, is she? What? Where's your blood family? Oh, wait, they're all dead, responded Grayson. Grayson, I'm silly bad because Blossom made fun of the fact you had a dead father. But now you're making fun of the fact Daisy Chain has a dead mother. What is your issue, Grayson? Like, <laughs> alright. Daisy Chain looked furious. No one in this story has any respect for anyone else's feelings. <laughs> and isn't your dad dead, responded Gigi. Some hero you are. Heroes meant to be kind and caring. You have you have traits of a cruel cool villain. Take my advice. You may be on the opposite side, but don't let your grudge against one villain control your life. We didn't kill your father. Blossom didn't kill your father. Don't take your anger out on people who are not responsible for your father's death. Gigi spitting facts. It will catch up with you in the long run, and it may even make you lose. If you are this cruel and mean, how are you much better than a villain? Shouted Chi-Chi, shouted Chi-Chi. Grayson stopped his defence. He didn't know what to say. Why was he being mean and horrible? This is not what his dad would have wanted. Then Daisy Chain grabbed him with her daisy chains. Lesson two, don't let your guard down, Master Chi-Chi, as he knocked them out. Now it's just, as he knocked him out, now it's just Blossom left. I don't want to be in another coma. I don't want to lose again, shouted Blossom. She had surrounded herself in a protective bu bubble of Blossom castles that floated there spinning. It's a pretty impenetrable defence. Then run home with your tail between your legs, like the little wimp you are. All these heroes recently have been poor excuses for a hero to make Daisy Jane. Damn. I can't run away the hero would it be if I did that, muttered Blossom in response. She managed to keep the predator bubble up and shoot Blossom petals at Daisy Chain, but she, she could tell that she was near her limit. Daisy Chain backed the petals down before collapsing. Team Daisy Chain was still prone to fainting when she used too much of her power. The petals cut Daisy Chain, she collapsed to the floor, and now it was one versus one, but Blossom had reached her limit and collapsed to the floor. Chi-Chi called for one of the tigers and put Daisy Chain and Zadia on his back and told him to take them back to the shack meanwhile. That's a really short meanwhile, but okay. Tiger Lily and Noah were managing to get Lily back a bit. When Lily fell over a rock, unlucky, mut muttered Tiger Lily as she stabbed her sister in the leg. Average Tiger Lily and Lily interaction. She had a little small grunt of pain, but was quickly unconscious due to blood loss. <laughs> I think I was tired of writing the combat at this point, because that was over quickly. Tiger Lily and tore off a bit of clothing and wrapped it around the wound. She wasn't going to let her sister die from blood loss. So, Broccoli, what are you going to do? Stop calling me that, she shouted. She shot an arrow at her, but Tiger Lily dodged. Eventually got close enough and kicked her in the stomach before punching her in the head, knocking her out. Okay, final chapter for today's episode. Chapter 8, A Confession. Daisy Chain and Azalea had woken up and and the others were tending to their wounds. Chi Chi was mainly making sure that they had everything they needed. Tiger Lily, who, Tiger Lily could we go for a walk? Chi Chi was warned enough to take care of the other two, asked Noah. I remember this chapter. I remember this chapter very well. I've been so excited about this chapter. Sure, it's been Tiger Lily. They got to a pretty openish field. However, it, it however, was in the middle of the night, so there wasn't much of a chance for them to get seen. You know, I noticed in battle, Lily's sword was proven to be quite a challenge for you. Have you ever thought about getting a sword? asked Noah. Not really. I don't know how good I would be with a sword, and my flying style is more like an animal, like with claws. 
I could have easily combated a sword, but I don't have thought, quite likely. There's no uh, got a rat present out of his pocket. For you, responded, said Noah, smiling. What's this for? asked Tigerly wonderingly. For letting me stay with you, letting me in, caring for my wounds. Just open it, said Noah. Tigerly opened it. Inside was some fingerless gloves. But it seems it was more than just gloves. Each glove had what seems to be a sleeve with a metal brace inside. Tigerly put them on and gloves were a pitch midnight black in colour. She's like Wolverine now. Do you see the little button there? Press it, said Noah. Tiny pressed the button and raised a sharp, shining face popped out of the silk. Popped out. The silver blades were sharp like claws. They were long and could combat, and could probably combat a sword. Tiny felt happy to have claws. It felt like she knew. It felt, it felt like what she knew. A big smile lit up on her face. She returned to the claws and hugged Noah. He blushed a bit and smiled before reciprocating the hug. You know what? I think I should do these. Take them for a test run. You want to spar with me? Asked Tigerly. Sure, but I don't want to hurt your pretty face. Just wanted to know. Wow, such a gentleman, Tony Tigerly. She gave him one of her daggers and they fought each other. The dagger clashing with the sword, with the claws. Tigerly was moving around low the face like a wild animal till they were out of breath. Where did you get this from? Asked Tigerly. Some guys owed me a favour. So I used it to get something for you, responded Noah. Thank you so much, I love it, responded Tigerly happily. I knew you would, responded Noah. Look at all the stars and the beautiful moon. It's just you, me and the moon and stars. Such a beautiful evening, responded Noah. <laughs> I'm trying not to die a little bit. This is cute, but also... You're, you're gonna see. Yeah, I'm not a Tigerly, gazing up at the stars. You know, there's another reason why I asked you here. Said so, Noah, his cheeks turning red. What is it? replied Tigerly obliviously. I think I, uh, I think that I love you, but more than just a friend, blurted out Noah. He was blushing so much now. Oh, I had no idea. I'm sorry. You're a great guy, but I'm going to have to say no, responded Tigerly apologetically. It's fine, muttered Noah, a tiny bit sad. I should have known you would have said no. Can I at least know why? asked Noah. It's because I simply just don't have a feel have a feeling for you like that. It would be cool to say yes and make you think that I loved you. Responded Tigerly. Have you ever loved anyone that way? This is it. This is it. This is it. Ah, I love this bit. I love this bit. I remember this bit so well. I love this bit. I love this bit. I love this bit. I love this bit. Have you ever loved anyone that way? Asked Noah. Yeah, responded Tigerly quietly. Who was he? Asked Noah. I think you mean she, responded Tigerly rather quietly. Tigerly my, was my first ever lesbian character. That's why I love Tigerly. That's why Tigerly will always have a special place in my heart because she was my first ever lesbian character. I was like 13 when I decided she was to be a lesbian and she has a special place in my heart ever since. That was before I knew I was a lesbian. Who was she? Wait, you don't like guys? I kind of never realised, but who was she? asked Noah. She was an amazing woman and I miss her very much. You've heard about Daisy, haven't you? Daisy changed mum, the one that, the one that stupid cops, those stupid cops think they killed. I loved her, more than just a friend. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. She was at that point the only human that mattered to me. Then when she told me she was pregnant, I knew I wanted to be Daisy Chain's other mother. That day, I was going to ask her to be mine forever. I was planning on it, but then I heard those gunshots. It was like my whole world was shattering apart into tiny fragments. Daisy was my world. I have no idea how I have survived so long without her. Probably because I wanted to do what she asked me to. Take care of Daisy Chain. She was the only person in the world that gave a damn about me. And I started to like her. If only I had told her my feelings earlier, she would have died knowing that I loved her. If only I had told her when she was dying, she may have been at peace. I could have stopped him if I'd been in the same room as her. I could have saved her. This world is so cruel. I just want Daisy back because I loved her. I still love her. Sob Day. Sob Tiger Lily. Sob Tiger Lily had begun to cry and Noah placed his arm around her. We may not be up in love, but allow me to continue being your friend, requested Noah. I would like that, it's my Tiger Lily, as they sat outside staring at the starry sky and talking about life.
and that is all for today's video um next time we are going to finish tiger lily part two and yeah um if you're wondering if it gets gayer it does get gayer trust me we're only at the like yeah um so thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next time so goodbye friends fruits and vegetables Bye.